many times as are necessary for me to get it. Uh, but in general, um, remember when we plus in uh, a channel to this move right here? You see that? It gave us a list of values, right? Um, this little number up in the corner, if you intimately understand what this means, you will have no problem learning the ins and outs of graph. But understanding what this means is super complicated. Okay? And in general, this is what we, so the structure of this is what we call a data tree. Okay? Um, we can, in the, the terminology that Grasshopper uses, we can graph data, we can splice data, we can flatten data, all of these sorts of things that are associated with tree, just as a sort of a visual mnemonic to help you understand what happens. Okay? Um, the best way to describe what's going on here is that all of this data is uh, organized under one data tree, under one data branch, and there are 41 items of data on that branch. Again, zero counts as one. Right? So if you, have a list, if you have a list from zero to 40, you have 41 items. Okay? That's, that's all of true. Now, the reason why this move isn't working is because of the way this data is structured. Instead of moving in series, that entire list of x points same way up in the y as we would expect, it is moving each successive point based on the next point in the series. And the only way it's doing that is because of the way that the data is organized. So it's taking this point and not moving it. It's taking the next point and moving it by the first subdivision. It's taking the next point and moving it by the next subdivision, and so on and so on, right? Which is why we get that diagonal line. And then when it gets here, it sort of does what we want it to do only because it's ran out of places to put that data. So what we want to do is we want to, uh, instead of having one branch on this data tree with 41 items, we want a tree with 41 branches. There, there's a component to do that, um, and, I'll, and I'll do it, and I'll show you the difference between the data structures. We're going to do what's called uh, uh, grafting. Okay. We're going to do what's called graft. I can graft. It'll be graft tree. And I'll show you the difference in data before and after the graft. So this is before the graph. If I plug this in, this is the data after the graph. Okay. So right here, it's saying that we have uh, one data tree. Data branch with 41 items. After I graphed it, it's taking each of those items, uh, the, the data on that, you could maybe think of them as leaves to house. I'm now taking each one of those and giving it uh, another, another level of data, which is saying that this is data tree zero, this is uh, <coughs> Branch, uh, no, we wouldn't want to say branch. We would say that uh, it is, uh, this one would be branch. So this would be branch zero that correlates to item zero. And then we have branch one that correlates to item one. It's the exact 
same level of information. If I, in fact, if I go down all the way, each one of these branches, because it has zero, it only has one piece of information on each of those branches. If I go down, it stops at 40, right? I've got 41 branches. Okay. At this point, it's really based on the sequence of this list, okay? But we want the same thing to happen to each of these things on the list. And what we need to do to do that, in, in this case it's grafting, um, which will then apply this series of moves, or I suppose this one, to uh, each of these branches. Um, it's not always it's not always true, but you can sort of think of as as each operation only happening on similar data levels. Um, what what's basically saying here is that we are applying the uh, the move in series to the entire tree rather than individually to each branch. Is that what the different lines mean? Like, Yeah, so because this line is dashed, that means there's been a, a, a change in data organization from one side of the component to the other. That's what the dash line means. Whether you graphed it or flatten it or uh, reparametricize it, it's, um, it'll change line types so you know that something has changed. Um, if I plug in, let's say, okay. um, so maybe this uh, helps to illustrate further why this might uh, be different. Um, so what I've done is I've plugged in the output of uh, Y into another panel so that we could compare the data organization, hopefully further illustrate. So what's happening here in this move is it's taking this data and it's moving it by this data. And since the uh, data branches are exactly the same, Right, there's, there's two numbers in parentheses. They both have, this one has one, let's do the X, let's find it. So this one has 41, uh, 41 move operations, and this one has 40 operations uh, to do. <coughs> okay. And uh, because the data structure is exactly the same, it's going to pair, it's going to pair them up. It's going to say uh, zero, this, uh, this uh, item zero to move is going to move based on uh, translation zero. Item one is going to move based on translation one. Item two is going to move based on translation two, and so on and so on and so on. Does that make sense? If the data is the same, then it's going to behave exactly like that. But after grafting, the way that the data will be, that it should be organized is that this, this geometry is going to, so uh, item zero, uh, and I guess sub, uh, subsequently branch zero, is going to be uh, operated, you know, based on you know, this movement, it's going to be operated by 
every operation in the same list, right? Branch, branch zero here, branch zero here, right? This tree has one branch, which is branch zero. This tree has 41 branches. So the like operations are going to happen branch to branch. So instead of the first one being moved by the first, the second one being moved by the second, and so on and so on, the first one is moved by all 41. The second one is moved by all 41. The third one is moved by all 41, and so on and so on. And this, uh, in this example, that is basically exactly the way that it works. Depending on your data flow, the geometry you're working with, how you structure the data before and after certain operations is going to tell you whether you think you need to graft or flatten or merge or so on. Now that's super, super complex, but conceptually, does that make sense? Operations are only going to be applied to geometry. If the, uh, well, they will always be applied to geometry. What happens is going to be based on the way the data is structured. Okay. Um, I'm not sure that I have more uh, ways of saying that. I'm sure there are YouTube videos that you can uh, digest and see if you can figure that out. When I, so when I first started learning Grasshopper, this is what tripped me up so that I couldn't get it. I kind of gave it up and came back to it and it sort of made sense somehow. I don't know. Uh, but I was still able to do the work without having as intimate of an understanding of how the data should be structured. That's a super, super niche, nuanced stuff. But if you, if you can understand that, you will always be able to write any script, no matter what you're doing. But I understand that it's a super steep learning curve. Uh, I'm not sure what chapter in this book explains it. I can look really quick. And then you can read uh, about it. Oh, perfect. Chapter two, how to manage data in Grasshopper. So chapter two of this book, how to, it's chapter two of this book. How to manage data in Grasshopper. Okay? So read that. Yeah. If you, uh, if you don't, if you don't have a chance to get this book and read it by next week, we can talk to people. I mean, we're going to talk about it, I'm sure, every day because it's that complex. Um, but we can go over that next week. Is that book listed on the syllabus? I didn't see that It one. is not. Will this prevent us from completing assignment one? Not knowing how to do this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, but I'm, I'm almost done. We'll show you how to fix that. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, big, so um, we could talk about data structures forever. I'm going to move on and just tell you that you need to graph it for a tool. You don't, you don't have to understand why we graph, but if you do, that gives you that much deeper of an understanding of how this works. So, uh, I guess again here, without, uh, instead of plugging in the ungrafted data, I'm going to plug in the grafted data, and that gives me my grid. You could craft the output by right-clicking on it and saying graph, or you could right-click the input and say graph. Okay. Um, one last organizational thing I'll do with this is I will actually right-click the output of graph and say simplify. What that does is remember when we graphed it, we had all of those, you know, zero, 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 right? 
those are sort of unnecessary um, data brackets that could trip you up in the future. Uh, what this does is it gets rid of all unnecessary zeros. So rather than saying, you know, uh, data set zero on trade zero on branch zero on item zero, this just says uh, tree, uh, tree zero, tree one, tree two, tree three, and so on and so on. It's just a way of simplifying the data so that if you have to do any further graphing, flattening, merging, it's easier to line up what sets of data you're trying to operate on other sets of data. Okay. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Just uh, simplify the physical. <laughs> So we got a grid of points. Right? All right. All right. Um, so um, we're sort of almost there. How much time? Yeah, I think we have Um So now, um, if we have a grid of points, how are we going to make Grid. Right? Lines. Yeah. Where are we gonna draw lines? Through the points. Right? We'll probably do one set of points through the X. One set of lines through the X points. And a second set of lines through the Y points. So let's do that. <laughs> um, I'm going to use the P line component, polyline, to do exactly that. Okay? okay. So what I'm going to do right here, P line, polyline vertex points. Well, that's probably um, every point that I have to work with. Okay. So I do that. Let me, uh, let me hide this really quick. Here we go. Look at all that. Look at those lines. <laughs> all I did was uh, hide the points so I can see the lines. All I did was plug in the, uh, the output of the second move into the D component of key okay. uh, I'm also going to simplify the output of that second move, just so the next things we do actually work. Again, it's just uh, distilling the same sets of data down so that they are compatible the way that we want them to be. Um, otherwise, just do the set set. Um, so, uh, maybe conceptually, um, for example, why, um, why did this only draw lines in the Y? It's connected to the Y. But it's also connected to the X. one point in the X and we moved all of those points in the Y. So uh, based on this, there is X and Y data in there. Yeah, it's, it's sort of the order of operations. Um, again, this goes back to the data tree. If I plug in the output of that move, um, the number that is increasing is the, the y, right, by 0.15 each time. So if uh, all, all polylines have a directionality, if the first one starts at zero and the last one starts at uh, uh, 11.25, then that's sort of direction of that line. So if we wanted to uh, 
invert that to draw lines in a uh, perpendicular direction, we have to do something to that set of data to work. What we do is we use the flip, the flip component. That's not the right swap the x and y and do the exact same thing. So instead of drawing from uh, x, x0 to x75, it's going to draw from, sorry, from y0 to y75, it's going to draw from x0 to x75, or whatever, whatever parameters you get. Um, and the way that that will look, plug this into flip, uh, plug in a panel, and we'll see exactly what that is, right? Instead of the y uh, number increasing, it's the x number increasing. Um, since uh, since this data is structured like a matrix, um, you know, values in the x and values in the y, and then and the result, all we need to do is swap the two in its data organization for it to behave the way you want it to. So what that command again? This one right here. Yeah. This is flip <coughs> matrix. How would we make it flip into the, the Z axis? You would have to start in different point. Okay. Get rid of those. And give myself a second P line component. I'll just plug the flipped data into the other one. Boom. And because we went all the way back to uh, this right here, our grid has an end. If I get rid of that plus one, it's for illustrative purposes. So, 
since uh, these are the lines that we want to dispatch, we'll have to do it twice, you know, once for the x and once for the y. But we'll start by plugging the, uh, the lines, the y lines, into dispatch right here. Um, uh, so what this has done, the, the default pattern is true-false, okay? So, uh, based on what I had said before, true-false is what's called a, uh, a Boolean operator, right? Um, conceptually sort of works the same as 3D Boolean commands, right? If you have two intersecting solids, if that is true, you get an intersection. Um, another way of thinking of it is in the Boolean intersection operator, uh, the area where there is only one calculable volume is false, and the area where there are multiple cal calculable volumes is true. And that's sort of where the terminology comes from. But in, uh, in Boolean operations, in terms of computer science, there's true and false, zero and one. Uh, true is zero and false is one. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> 50-50 uh, chance of being right. Uh, there's true, false, zero, and one. That, that is to say that you can you can give a uh, a boolean receptacle a numerical value, and based on whether it's even or odd, will let you know whether it's true or false. Okay. Or you can just give it true, false. Okay. Um, so we need to give this a pattern, right? Um, and instead of true, false, we want True, false, 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 true, false, 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 false right? Um, the way that we're going to do that is by uh, um, we'll we'll use a little bit of uh, a little bit of maths to do that. You didn't know you could multiply true. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up a panel. I'm going to type true. And remember, don't press enter after you're done with this. Just press OK. okay. And I'm going to copy and paste that. Change the second one to false. Okay. And what's nice about doing it this way is it's going to relate the pattern we make to the numbers that create the pattern in the first place. Um, so uh, we are going to use uh, the merge component to merge the true data with the false data. What I want to do is come up with a merge pattern that basically gives us true, false, 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 false. Uh, and with that, when we get that pattern, plug it into dispatch, we don't need to do it as many times as there are grid, because it will automatically repeat the pattern. Okay. So this pattern, uh, we can take, uh, uh, we're going to take the number of grid subdivisions, which is five, that's five right here, and we're going to um, subtract one. Does anybody know why we might do that? <coughs> is there already one because it, it starts at zero? Yes. There, uh, if we did not subtract one, we would have two lines every fifth line, because the way that we've moved it has started at zero. Okay? So what we're really doing is we're, however many subdivisions there are, we're doing one less, because we know, we don't, we basically don't want an overlap of a major line and a minor line at the same spot, because that's the way that it would work if we did this. So, I'll use the subtraction component. Subtraction. Just 
say this, the grid subdivisions, minus want to uh, flatten the input uh, dispatch. There we go. So if I go here, group A is every fifth line that's highlighted in green. And group B is everything else that's highlighted in green. See that? So right here, so based on what we've done, Group A is the major lines, and group B is the minor lines. Okay. 
And now we just need to do the exact same thing for the y. this uh, in the, sorry, going in the x, x direction. Uh, group A is every fifth line, the major line. And group B is, it, is everything in between. And because we did that pattern of five minus one or a true false, 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 there's no, there's no overlap between major line and minor line. space in between, because those lines should be the major lines that we have in this group, right? Turn this back on. That's just all of our grid, but it's split into major and minor. And then one last thing that I like to do is um, I'll bring up another geometry container. Plug the merge into geometry. Right click and change the name from geo to major grid lines. I'll do the same thing for the other one. And call it select everything except the very last components. If I press down on my middle mouse button, like you're trying to pan an AutoCAD, and hover over the blind bulb, release, that hides everything except these last two things. So I highlight things that I, so for example, if I right click, go to preview, that'll turn that singular component on. But if I highlight multiple things, push down on the middle mouse button, push down and keep it held down, this ring pops up. If I then go hover over the blindfold, that's hide and the non-blindfold is show. 
So if I just release my middle mouse button over one of these, that will that will do it all at once. Okay. If I if I select multiple and then I try to right click preview, it only works on whatever I right click. The middle mouse button works on everything you select. <laughs> So what's what's the very last thing I'm going to do to get this grid into Rhino? Make it. Probably be on two different layers, right? So let's bake the major grid lines, let's say on layer one, and the minor grid lines on layer two. Okay. So now if I turn off uh, this preview, here we go. I have actually a selectable grid. But the major grid lines, right? Layer one, minor grid lines, layer two. And what's nice about setting up the script in this way is you could you can change your X and Y count to sliders. Uh, since each grid would be sort of slightly different. Um, if it's a square, your X and the Y are the same. If it's a, a taller lowercase or a shorter lowercase, then the grid would be shorter. You can adjust those with sliders. If you want to increase the, uh, the size and scale, all you need to change is the grid spacing, because the subdivisions would stay the same. If you wanted more subdivisions, you would just increase that number. So being able to change those parameters makes this entirely apparent. So now on our grids here, we have five subdivisions there instead of six. That's like on here. Our sheet. Oh, that's true. Okay, then just change it to six. Okay. Just the subdivision we type in six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me let's, let's make sure that that works. Uh, Change this to six. Yeah. Let's make sure that we still have. Um, 